Wow, eggs of a moth species from Africa are hatching. And we're going to attempt to raise them from tiny baby caterpillars into fully grown moths. It's hard to say what species they truly are because there are many similar ones and I don't really trust the identification for 100%. But they were given to me under the name of Epiphora plutzi from Cameroon. In captivity, the caterpillars can feed on numerous plants that are also found in Europe, such as willow tree or salix, alder buckthorn or rhamnus frangula, ceonothus or California lilac, and even some species of cherries or prunus. None of these are their native food plants in Africa, however. In Africa, they often feed on Xanthoxylum species, which are from the citrus or rutacea family. Therefore, Epiphora can be tricky to raise because their native food plants are often not available to breeders in Europe and America. Instead, we have to offer them inferior substitutes and often they don't really thrive on them. As they grow bigger, the caterpillars slowly become solitary instead of social, such is the case for many Epiphoras. This is instar number 4. They are growing fast already. This is instar number 5. Now the larvae are fully grown and spectacular. Not many made it to the final instar sadly, but some of them did, that's the good news. Larvae are huge, black and with a yellow flank and with bright yellow spines. Quite badass if you ask me. Epiphora species don't get much attention online, but with your support I could raise more species of them in the future. I'm figuring out what kind of setups work the best for them right now. They do seem resilient if you find the right food plant. Finding a good food plant is the big challenge. Look at how awesome and unusual they are, however. It's not often you see their life cycles anywhere. That's why you gotta watch my channel, of course. I'm happy to show you the world's coolest insects with love and passion. There are a few things in life that give me more raw and pure happiness than seeing my caterpillars grow into moths. Several months later, the caterpillars spin tough, papery cocoons between the leaves of their host plants. The cocoons are easily harvested. When stored on room temperature, the cocoons several months later turn into amazing moths. They have turned into moths. Hehe! <laughs> are you ready to see the moths? Pow! Wow! Oh my god! This next piece I'm showing you is really special and spectacular. Can you see them? So this uh, black one here is the female. And this whitish one here is the male. And this is a species of silk moth from the country of Kenya in Africa. They are from the genus of Epiphora. And Epiphoras are a little bit tricky to raise in captivity. Uh, actually, that's not true. They're actually quite easy to breed. The main problem is that in Europe they really don't like much of the plants that we have here. In Africa they eat many plants like Sisyphus, uh, plants that do not really grow in Europe. And in Europe we try to give them other plants instead, such as Rhamnus or um, other plants like Ceonotus. And it's possible to raise them on this sometimes, but it's just the results are inferior to re-raising them on the plants they really want in the wild. That sucks. It's still an amazing species. Just look at this black, beautiful female. It's incredible and these moons on their wings. Just look at the detail. The colors is simply breathtaking and stunning. Wow. Wow. This fantastic specimen right here is the male.
The males are white greyish in color and quite large. Supposedly this species is found in the African countries of Angola, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Guinea, Nigeria, Rwanda, Sudan, and perhaps more countries. And that's if we assume the identification of Apiphora plutsi is correct. I'm not sure. They like warm and humid conditions. They sadly don't live for very long, unfortunately. Let's stare at it for a little, little while before I show you the female. Alright, it's time to show you one of the females that I raised, and this is what she looks like. She is black and beautiful with yellow crescents. Absolutely incredibly beautiful. Don't you just absolutely love moths? Can you tell the color difference compared to the males? This channel documents the life cycles of many species of moths. The females also have more rounded wings compared to the males' falcate wings. Which are more beautiful, the males or the females? Let me know in the comments what you think. The real question is here though, can this, these moths be paired? Let's put a male and a female together. Wow, after putting them together, just for a few hours at night, they immediately paired. Awesome. I guess uh, now it's time to collect the eggs of these moths, see if they are fertile, which I presume, yes. But you never know, the pairings of Saturnids are usually a reliable indicator for fertility. But from my experience there is always a very small chance that when a species is pairing, that the eggs are infertile. This is generally very rare, but it does happen in rare cases. So, collecting the eggs putting them in a petri dish. It's the usual, you watch my moth cycles videos before. And yeah, that means you know the drill, right? Unless you're new on this channel, you've seen me do this over and over and over. Which is pretty cool, honestly. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> believe it or not, but uh, it worked. We have babies of Apiphora moths. This is a first time for me. What? And with that, the life cycle is completed. The sexy moth king has managed to breed another species of moth today. Isn't it amazing? And now it starts all over again. Thanks so much for watching people. Hope to catch you in my next moth breeding video. And in the future, I'm considering making a big moth cycles episode about this species. That would be cool. Sorry that I had to make it short. Thank you.